first speaker. I really like to have a, um, a sincere and, and heartbreaking uh, feedback because uh, lately, you know, we are, ex we are all going through that, uh, the dig digitalization process. And it changes the relationships within our society. And a few years ago, we decided that it actually needed a systemic examination. And hopefully, hopefully even more than that, um, some uh, governing principles. And, and the tool set which might be used, one of the tools, should can be found in the cybernetics toolbox hopefully now uh, i will try to open the the, the our discussion and then uh, as already said theodora will fill in and then lastly uh, matthias will try to elaborate on the social responsibility part in my part i will only mention social responsibility. <laughs> i will not really go into that uh, no the, the only issue with digitalization is not what it brings to us. It is what we expect uh, to happen. And what we can expect is to increase uh, its development speed and maybe even develop some kind of levels of autonomy. So the, the digitalization right now is serving as a support in our current system of communication what we do expect, uh, it will outgrow it. Uh, just the two words about social responsibility. It, it can provide a requisitely holistic set of behavioral norms, which are focused in managing not only individual, but also organizational behavior. And uh, as they're set, they are expanding the currently, I, I must say, very narrow ethical and normal norms of communication. And so this is why this is why we're bringing social responsibility uh, into play. Now let's go to the, uh -huh. why can't I go to the definition, which might be good, because some of you, you asked me what what is the digitalization now there are a few words which are related to digitalization first one is digitization which is basically converting information from the physical that's analog format into digital one and that's basically a, a very harsh reduction in the content and uh, when this process of changing information from analog to digital is leveraged to improve not only business but organizational process. It's called digitalization. So it's not basically uh, the the technical form, uh, the technical term for uh, uh, changing the inter information. It's about uh, how that affects the organization, the processes, and uh, the the <clears throat> to make things complicated, the process of putting an organization uh, into a digital form, it's called digital transformation. Okay, those are, those are the three definition of the terms which try to elaborate the digitalization. As you can see, it's with an S uh, because uh, you know, in, it's, it's found in UK dictionary. I, I'm not sure about the USA dictionary. Uh, now, about the implications, uh, yes, uh, about implications, digitalization affects the content and dynamics of interactions. <clears throat> and it does that for all stakeholders in the world. And if I mean all stakeholders, that means also the really passive ones, as for instance, the nature. The natural environment is quite uh, hard, is quite affected by the digitalization. Uh, how so? For instance, you know, you know 
much more about nature, processes, about nature structure, about where to find oil, uh, uh, how to predict earthquakes, uh, all these kind of things which you, we didn't know before, we know it now. And this is, this is part of the digitalization. And the, the really important part is the relationship which are redefined by the dynamics of interactions. Now, okay, obviously, obviously I'm, I'm just too fast or, or that. Uh, to somehow create a model of that, and it, it was really tricky because we, we didn't know how to use it. Uh, we tried to use a system dynamics uh, model, but it didn't prove to be, to, to, to provide a picture. So we, we switched it a little bit and said, okay, it's not a system dynamics model, it's an interactions model. Uh, and what it does, it's, you, you, it can be used to examine the interactions between entities and when you, when you examine interactions between the entities, you can actually uh, uh, deduce out of that the relations between the entities. Because uh, the, 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 the hypothesis is, of course, that the relations mm -hmm. are not just there. Relations are there because of the interactions between the entities. They are the consequences of interactions. So we, are, we have tried to, to, to find the, the most important, the most influential uh, interactions between the stakeholders, and then uh, try to see uh, what it brings, right? So I will try to, yes. So this is the model and I will show it like four times again from these <laughs> different perspectives, but maybe as you can see there, uh, the entities are in brackets. The interactions uh, have arrows and interactions per se are without the brackets. And you can see that in the middle, we can see ICT providers and smart devices, which is interesting. And those are basically, uh, the guys who are affecting the equilibrium of the system currently. Okay, and now I'll go manually in there. So if you're talking about repetitive interactions, it's not something that happens once. Uh, they declare some kind of intent. You interact with somebody only if you really want to, right? And it defines the symmetry and this is not symmetry, it's asymmetry. And speed of communication. And this is very important because if an entity, the stakeholder has a mm -hmm. capacity to, to really uh, uh, communicate faster, stronger, it affects the, it affects the other stakeholder. So basically it's, uh, um, it affects their relationship. And those are defined by the stakeholder capacity to interact. Let me, let me put a, a, one, one of the pictures there. For instance, if we, if we see here the ICT providers and legal frameworks related to organizations and individuals, it, it, it looks kind of strange, but really, may I ask you, how many of you have uh, agreed to an end user license lately? When you installed some kind of software, something. How many of you had the capacity to actually read it? <laughs> or, or maybe understand it? Or maybe react to it? Okay, so that's, that, that's the point. Right, so somebody is using legal framework uh, with very, you know, with the capacity to do it, 
against our limited capacity to actually comply. And uh, how? Wh what's the Latin word for uh, not understanding the war? Uh, the the uh, legislation hurts. Theodora, what's? I have no idea what you think. Mm, yeah, well, there is there is a very famous, I mean, very well used uh, uh, Latin words for that. But so, no, absen absentia. <laughs> it <Okay>. might be. <laughs> uh, now, what what that does, you know, it it, defi it redefines the the relations, right? And this is very very important. It redefines the the. Uh, 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 the, the relations between the stakeholders and put some stakeholders in power which were not there before. And what it triggers as well, it can trigger pathological behavior patterns because some, some uh, uh, stakeholders are allowed to do things which maybe they shouldn't. And they can and they exploit it, right? So this is this is a quite serious issue. I don't think so. Okay. Now, if we go to another one, if I mentioned legal framework, you know, this one is really nice: <laughs> services and activities, and those are provided uh, to organizations, to individuals, and interestingly enough, also to the natural environment. So we are slowly expanding also the, our group of uh, known entities, known stakeholders not only ECT providers and smart devices, but organizations, individuals, and natural environment. We really try to pick up the, the most important groups. Frankly, this is, this is a, a world model. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that I don't believe in world models. Okay, now let's have a look on the stakeholders. Uh, you see, I think that this this is this is an important uh, picture. Going from active to passive, or passive to active. What what does that mean? That means either you lead the communication, or you accept and try to follow it. And what we can see uh, from the speed of com uh, from interactions, from the from the power of interactions, ICT providers and smart devices are really, really uh, 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 ahead of that. So they are actively interacting also among themselves. Also, it's, it's a, a local reasoning and global reasoning there. And if we spoke about uh, artificial intelligence, limited and uh, general, right? In smart devices, we may find some limited uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, but the data is is stored here with ICT providers, and they can they can afford to develop uh, general intelligence, right? Well, they are not there yet, thankful, thank God. But when they come, the general intelligence will emerge here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> for us in the society, we we uh, developed some. Uh, um, some blocks, something which stabilizes, regulates the, the society. Uh, we developed moral and ethical norms. Yep. And those are reported. The, the behavior is reported. And up there, there are regulators, which regulate the, the, the development of uh, regulatory from frameworks, which affect legal uh, uh, frameworks, and so on. The issue here is that those are delayed. Those uh, uh, interactions loops are delayed. So if you have one speed here, a much slower speed here, then the speed of uh, this part of the interactions is really slow. It lags. And, and therefore, it's very hard to follow up the development uh, of ICT providers, providers and smart devices. And this is another, uh, another thing to worry about. How to develop a system that puts regulators 
in the capacity to answer to the speed of interactions of ICT providers and smart devices. I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to put the, uh, the, the questions out there because the answers are, from my perspective, uh, not really clear. Okay, and I could go through all of that, but I would not like to, uh, or maybe, maybe I'll just scan. Okay, individuals, organize, you, can, you can have that, it's already posted. Uh, where I would like, I would like to stop here with regulations. They just don't keep up. And therefore, I think they need redesign. Is that follow from your model, or do you, is that that's, just that's your basically opinion? that's basically that goes from from this part of the, oops, no, I will not go uh, from the part of the model where you can see the the delayed, uh, uh, yep. And how do you do that? I, I mean, just know. as an example, how do you yep. pick the regulators out of your model? You have a comprehensive model. Mm -hmm. And then there's yeah. a box the, with regulators. It, the model is hypothetical in nature by now. We did not we did not uh, put it uh, through a series of simulation which could go there. Before before that, I wanted to have uh, some kind of a Delphi analysis, which we are doing now. So it's a kind of dynamo, isn't it? It mm. is. It is. Now let's let's try let's try to see about the the experience and this is the experience uh, that was gathered gathered from from multiple uh, uh, people reporting it. Uh, now what can we see that the first of all the the new grid of communication is developing. Right right now we are capable of having. Uh, uh, multimedia discussion over several continents, which is, frankly, I, I couldn't understand how, how that could be happened a few years ago. Uh, the, the 5G, which is uh, on, one side so, on one side so uh, praised and on the other side so feared, is not really intended to support human communication because we are now either on 4G or whatever. Uh, it's intended to straighten the communication between the smart devices and ICT providers to so that this loop is even faster, right? Uh, you know, the experience is that existing governance models do not apply. I know that your EU is trying really, really hard to somehow uh, um, limit or somehow govern the, the uh, ICT providers and a great deal of, of um, effort is put in, in not only mitigating the, the, uh, the uh, inappropriate behavior and pathologics, pathologies, but also in providing a supportive environment for developing good practices. Yeah. Uh, but they still do not apply. You know, it, it's really hard to, to, to keep up with uh, Chinese uh, development of uh, mobile phones, uh, with uh, Google, uh, with uh, Microsoft. They, they are really the big guys. I will not speak about uh, Amazon. Uh, and ICT providers are gaining power over both all of that individuals, organizations, environment, and what is the most horrible regulators. They are self-regulating in some instances. I would like to point out the, 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 the really, you know, we expected from Facebook, uh, the, from social media engineers to, um, uh, to keep the, the communication in their social media and we deliver them the tools to do it. So they are governing that, right? And it came out as a surprise. Now when uh, Donald Trump was blocked without, without any legislation uh, underlining it. 
So he was blocked by a company, by an ICT provider. They already have the regulators uh, 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 mm, processes built in. So they're going around regulators, which is fascinating, right? So if you want to be excluded out of the society, somebody can decide to do it. They are, they are developing their own regulatory space. Why is that? I don't know. What are regulators doing there? Okay. So this is this is well, perhaps you could really yeah. say something about why that is of concern to you. I mean, given the general nature of an economic system. Well, you know, it's my personal belief that people should have the power to affect the regulators, right? So the regulators should be outside of the, of the uh, let's say, let's call it business environment. They should not be part of that because if, if they're part of the system, they, they are on, on, on the side of somebody, on, on side of, of the one who is financing, supporting and uh, developing them. And right now uh, it seems like the regulators are part of the ICT providers uh, uh, systems. Is this? I, I'm without... still, still uh, trying to separate the distinction between private economic interactions and if you would, human interactions. Okay. If I could just comment, uh, the issue is finding <clears throat> antidotes to power because power centralizes, it destroys the ecology of the information, it provides a, uh, it destroys the context, it, uh, it redirects the system so it cannot steer itself, it cannot self-organize. I would is it agree. is it the power the concept of power itself in for example for me to lift up my cup of coffee or is it the magnitude of the power it's the structure of the power you know the 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 result of that is the that pathologies emerge right pathological behaviors which do not serve the the whole system but use and misuse the whole system for its own benefits. And basically leaving all the other stakeholders, organization, individuals, natural environment by side. They're not important That's political anymore. economy, isn't it? That's normal in the political economy. Well, it depends on the political economy of a country. You know, we, we have several there. Okay. Yep. Uh, and Okay, now this is something, there is another loop in there. Uh, if ICT providers are really going to develop the artificial intelligence, right? The, the, the kind of intelligence that learns, learns from the uh, framework of rules, but most importantly, it learns through example. What is what I see, what, that's what I do. Uh, and if this artificial intelligence uh, uses the pathologist patterns as a part of their uh, its reasoning power, then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know we really don't have uh, a long time on this planet because it will it will use these patterns in a way which we find normal that somebody has power over over everybody to have power over everybody because it will be faster, it will deduce, it will interact faster. Uh, uh, and yes, well, you can, you can picture the outcome yourself. So it's not, it's not only about the current uh, relations, it's about what will the, the, the general artificial intelligence learn from that. And we can expect to come in, well, I will not say tomorrow, but soon. But has this happened? I mean, people are making these predictions for 20, 30 years. Yeah, but now we can, we can see it developing. 
you know, and, and you know, frankly, um, cybernetics is one of the fields where where uh, these ideas uh, came out and the, the the communication on that actually started. So I think it, it's important. Now the, the last question is how to invoke social responsibility here? Which model, you know, uh, how to understand the models of that? Because frankly, you know, we have put together one model mm -hmm. and we're not happy with it. It's, it's a model which can be used to communicate, to discuss things, but it's not a, a really proper model which depicts the, the, the whole picture. So we need to, we need to model that. Uh, second one is we need to go, uh, develop governance models. Which, how? Because governance right now, I think, I think we need to rethink it. And third one is the most important. We should not, we should stop uh, preaching something and doing something else. Right, we should start acting according to the models, and this is this is this is where social responsibility actually steps in. And yes, uh, I will conclude with uh, the statement that I will learn from what we do. Okay. I hope humans will learn too. Yes, well, if we don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, so this this was this was my short presentation. Hopefully, I I wasn't too long, um, and I opened several. Uh, if I could comment quickly, uh, Igor, uh, excellent presentation. Uh, my concern is with the cybernetics community, because we hold responsibility for having first generation cybernetic artifacts and the ability to place a larger context. Just as an example, uh, computer digitization is based upon uh, conjunctive logic, Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra, as well as the Western tradition, is a tradition of logic of nouns. And of nouns, they're things, they're discrete objects. And the relationships are then pr provided by the ICT or whoever has the power versus self formation. That's where second order cybernetics and the linking to the observer is extremely important. And our responsibility to take cybernetics beyond the artifacts. Thank you, Lovell. This is precisely what what I envisioned to have. So uh, I think the cybernetics uh, could use an external uh, factor of push. And if, if we are able to respond to this appropriately, it may lead to, to, the, to the further development of, of cybernetics. Uh, because it be, not because we, we would like to have it, <clears throat> but because we would need it in order to to uh, to deal with the the, the issues uh, we are facing here. So the question right. is about learning, and I mean, just this morning I was putting off uh, some email epistles to the school I started twenty years ago up here about needing to change the curriculum because of conspiracy theories, because of social media. Just as an example, this past year, gaming has become the preferred platform versus music, versus any other forms of movies. Gaming has bring more income revenues than all movies and all sports combined. So what are we learning from movies in this generation has decontextualized as many times aggressive, let's say, targeting. Um, so how do you change your curriculum? I, I, I just brought that up this morning, uh, even before the session, because I see it written large in our society. Our students do not know how to navigate. They do not know how to steer. And they cannot create an identity 
that is have a capacity for self-organization and centralization of the self. Hmm? Okay, we listen to the second presentation. Maybe Theodora has a, has a comment and maybe we can uh, 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 follow uh, us. Thank you, um, gentlemen. Hello, Christy, Lowell, Chai, hi. Um, I believe in reinvention, but as long as uh, I, I'm listening very carefully, but you know, I believe again in reinvention, but as long as second order cybernetics will be enough, then we don't, we are not going to reinvent the cybernetics and we are not going to reinvent ourselves. Um, this is my humble opinion, but uh, I'm waiting for uh, for the floor. I'm on I'm third of the line, so I think. You know, you're the second. Jason, professor, professor Jason.